So what is an inverter? An inverter is one of these guys that convert 12 volt DC from a 12 volt battery into 240 AC like we do at home. So you can run some home appliances while you're camping and it doesn't get much better than that. So basically what you need to do first off to find out what size inverter you need is look at the device that you're using and what they normally do is they'll tell you the actual amount of watts that they use. So like a laptop charger or something small might say 150 watt to 200 watt, you know, and then you know you can go, you know, for one of the smaller models. Um, and for instance, microwave ovens, you know, usually what they'll say is, um, and it's confusing with microwaves because um, they might say it's an 800 watt oven, but usually that means it's the power output. So it uses 800 watts cooking power to cook whatever food. But if you look behind your item and check, sometimes these can be up to 12, 1300 um, watts. So we need to keep that in mind too when we're buying an inverter. If we're using a device that's, um, you know, for this one that's 700 watts, well, we don't want a 700 watt inverter for a 700 watt device because with especially changing from 12 volt to 240 volt, so basically you want a little bit of headroom. And what I mean by that is just a couple of hundred watts more than um, what the actual appliance is rated. So this would be great, as I said, for a 500 watt appliance or 600 watt. Normally there's a 20% rule. Another way to look at that is your car's taco. You know, you've got your red zone, you know, 5,000, 6,000, 7,000 RPM. Usually you don't drive your car at that red line because it's just screaming its head off. Well, it's the same with an inverter. We want the inverter to work nice and efficient, a low RPM like your car. So once again, that sort of gives you a rough idea of how headroom works. We want at least a couple hundred watts of headroom over our, um, out of our devices. So just remember when you are working out what your devices are powering, if you're going to be running a couple of devices at once, um, you know, just remember to add that up as well um, because, you, you know, once again, you don't want to go overboard and you want to keep that headroom. So, you know, for instance, your microwave might be pulling 1200 watts and your laptop charger might be using 150. So just remember to add up what items you're using and give yourself that appropriate amount of headroom. These are handy little things. So this is something I got from a hardware shop. And what you can do is you can plug it into your devices at home and find out, you know, beforehand you go camping what it can and can't use. You know, you might have to end up telling your, uh, telling your other half that, hey, you can't take your hair dryer because it uses 3000 watts, you know, and they've, you know, you've only got a, a 1200 watt inverter to run it on. So this is really good getting one of these and that gets to know the amount of output that the devices use. Okay, another term you might have heard with inverters that's a bit confusing is the peak power or surge power. So some particular items like toasters or microwaves, um, or drills for e um, instance, you know, a power drill. Um, a lot of drills you can actually press the trigger and, and go nice and slow and bring it up and other times you can press it straight away. Well, that would be sort of what the surge power is. So our surge power on our inverters are basically double their stated wattage. Now, this is only for um, milliseconds. Basically what it does is it, um, it, it helps with items like that that use a little bit of power instantly and then drop down and start to use the rated power source. So that's something to keep in mind too. Okay, so when you get your inverter and you need to set up, remember, Use the cables that are supplied. Don't use any thinner cabling. If you want to go upgrade, that's fine. But keep the inverters as close to the battery as possible. Use 240 volt extension leads if you need to go further away from things. Don't use the inverter and the cables to the battery. So with the small inverters, it's okay to have a 120 amp hour battery or a single 170, that's okay. When you start moving up to the bigger inverters from 2000 onwards, we suggest at least two 120 amp hour batteries as a battery bank. Heading up to the 3000, you know, we highly recommend at least 270 amp hour batteries just to help with the capacity of the inverter. Another quick hint is when hooking up to multiple batteries, um, I do see a lot of people, what they'll do, if they've got their batteries hooked up correctly, but they'll go to one battery and just use the positive and negative like that. That's not what we want to do. What we want to do is put the positive on one of the batteries and we want to put the negative on the other battery bank. So we want to make it as a completely big battery and that way what it's gonna do, it's gonna spread the load evenly over the two batteries. If you actually just hook it up to the one battery like this, it will still favor this battery and this battery will come down more than what this battery will. So once again, oppose the two positive and negative terminals and you can't go wrong. Now, I just wanna quickly explain something too. Another quick hint is when you're disconnecting an inverter, um, if you're gonna store it away or remove it out of the system, remember that all the components on the inside are still charged up. So you wanna really be able to discharge um, the inverter itself. So I'll show you why this one's not being connected. If you have a quick look at the voltage, and you can see we've still got some voltage there. If you look inside of one of these, there are some very large capacitors. So these are what still stays charged once the unit's turned off. So that's why I want you to be really careful when discharging an inverter. 
um, either let it sit there with the power turned on to drain the voltage over half an hour or so, or, you know, as I said, you can short the cables out. It won't damage the unit, but it just stops you from getting a nice shock. Okay, so with some lithium batteries, they've got what's called a battery management system, which is basically a, a little computer inside the battery and that protects the battery and lets you know how much to charge it and how much discharge it can have, and it controls the output of the battery. Now, some inverters on the market, when you're trying to instantly start things, it actually can let the BMS know, oh, hang on, you might be trying to pull um, 100 amps or something out of the battery instantly, and what the battery management systems do will shut that battery down and not let it power up an inverter. Now our inverters here are actually lithium compatible, so we've got the technology in it that won't stress out the um, battery management systems in the lithium batteries so they don't go into protection mode and think something's going wrong. It's fantastic being able to use a microwave oven and things like toasters and other items that draw a fair bit of current, but remember they are only to use for little periods at a time. If you go using them for longer periods, you're really gonna drain the batteries down and in some particular cases can ruin batteries. So just remember with high power devices, they're only for short term use and also you, know, you need good battery banks to su support um, the use of these items. Alrighty, thanks so much for checking out our digital pure sine wave inverters that are actually lithium compatible. We've got the 700, the 1200 watt, 2000 watt, the big 3000 watt beast. They all come with all the cables, we supply it all for you. Comes with a set of instructions in English you can read. We've thought of everything. Head over to the website, check them out. Cheers. That is really good toast. Yum.